Hey gang, welcome back to Enlightened Outdoors. It's good to have you along today. Um, about 10 days ago, we got a pretty significant storm here in northern Indiana and uh, had a lot of snow. So I took old faithful Bessie out here and was trying to uh, clear it, but it was a really heavy snow. And uh, it was just right around the freezing mark. And you know how tough that snow is to move. But this is a MCD yard machine, 30 inch with a Briggs and Stratton 1350 uh, snow series engine on it. So this does not have a throttle to speak of really. Um, ever since the EPA came out with some of their new regulations, they determined that these engines should not be able to be controlled by the consumer. They're gonna be controlled by the governor on the engine. And I've been trying to figure this out for <clears throat> the last day or so, just doing some research online and looking at other people's YouTube videos and so forth. So I've already got this machine running again the way that it should be. But the problem I was having was that when I would start to get into the snow, um, it would never rev up. So it would only throw the snow maybe three or four feet and then it would bog down. And when it was just about to bog down and die, then it would start to rev up. But by that point, so much snow had packed into the chute that the back tires couldn't push it anymore. So I ended up just pushing on the machine as hard as I could, trying to keep that higher rev speed engaged. And in all reality, instead of tearing up my shoulders and legs, I should have brought it back here in the garage and worked on it and made the change that took me, you know, 15 minutes to make. So without really knowing much about it, uh, also I couldn't find my manual, so I was trying to look up stuff on Briggs and Stratton's website. Um, but anyway, here's just a brief synopsis of some of the things that you're gonna need. If you're having the issue, um, some people have the issue where theirs doesn't wanna stay idling well, and that usually ends up being like a plug jet or something in the carburetor. Um, but in this case, it didn't want to rev up and give me the RPMs I needed to actually throw the snow far enough to get it off the driveway. So what I ended up doing was taking off all this plastic shrouding, taking off the gas tank so I could get to the uh, governor that's underneath the gas tank. Um, it seems like a lot of plastic to get out of the way and it kind of is, but really it's not that hard and you only need a couple different sockets. Um, I brought more here than what I needed, but I've got an eight millimeter and a 10 millimeter, and that's pretty much good for everything. Um, you're gonna need a pair of pliers to get this choke knob off. I thought, I was trying to figure out if there are set screws that held it on, and there's really not. Um, I thought maybe there's one down in here that needed an Allen wrench. I couldn't get anything down in there that would help loosen this up. And then from what I read, you just have to pull on this thing with everything you've got and hope that you don't break the plastic shaft that goes down to your choke. Uh, anyway, so that's what I did. I left it loose for this application because I didn't want to take a chance of pressing it on and then popping it back off and maybe breaking it again. So <laughs> that come off pretty easy, but yeah, it does press fit down on there pretty hard. And I had to take these pliers and just kind of put them on the white joint setting and grab it right here by the front and just pull up with the level thumb bar. So uh, once you get that off, there's a couple bolts here that come off. This little wingy type, type of guys. And, and honestly, I get this shaft out of the way, which is what I did. But you know, I was having issues with the chute, not wanting to turn very easily also. And uh, so I, I took that chute gearbox and everything off and oiled everything up good because it was really rusty in there. But uh, you get these guys off. And I'll put it over here on this little tray. Anyway, that just kind of lifts up, and you can you can kind of fish these wires for the ignition key. Um, you don't have to unplug it; you can lay it off here to the side. And same way with this fuel line. It's a good time to inspect your fuel lines too. Make sure nothing's dry rotted or cracked, or you don't have any gas leaks or anything going on on that primer. And then you got your fuel supply line here that comes into the carb from the gas tank. And then you can see here this is your butterfly for your for your throttle that's ran by the governor. And there's no throttle adjustment on this guy. So on the back of this, you have to take this little plastic shroud off too, just so you can get this gas tank up and out of the way. Unless you, if you have an empty fuel tank, I suppose you could just take this fuel line off and you could leave all this on and just fish the fuel line out from underneath it here. 
but uh, I chose just to take these two these two little guys off right here these little eight millimeters check that 10 millimeters and just a little you know if you got a 10 millimeter nut driver that'll be fine if you want to get mr. fancy pants and use the impact you know hey I wouldn't tighten it that way unless you don't like your plastic off of there, bring that up around the side, and then it can sit right there. And then this is really your only air filter on a snow, uh, snow blower because, you know, let's face it, you're not going through cut grass with it. But it does get some spider webs and things on it sitting over there, so it's always good to blow that out. Uh, check the inside of the car, make sure it doesn't look too funky in there, mine looks pretty good. And then over here on this back side, I'll turn it around so you can see it. You've got these two little eight millimeters right here. So we'll pop those guys out. We can fast forward through some of this. When we're not boring you to death, we'll turn in the screwdriver. And yeah, I'd already done all this, but my son made the point, well, hey, you know, you had trouble finding stuff about this on YouTube. So he's like, maybe you can help somebody out if you, if you do one on it. So I'm like, hey, why not, right? And it'll take how long. And if I can uh, keep from fumbling over my words too much, we won't have to do too many edits. So on this side, I'm sorry, let me spin it around here. that there there's a bulb right there there's one here I've already got out let's take that guy out okay let me spin it back around This little guy right here, it's got that little tab that sticks out. You just pull on that, it's like a little door that opens up. And inside the door are two more bolts, both 10 millimeter. So you get in and spin those out. Seems like every time I get this machine turned that way, you see Frosty's expression kind of changes. <laughs> it's like, oh no, it's coming after me. All right, so this is where this rod's kind of in the way. You might be able to fish it down, have it hang out down here as long as you get a good hose. But it's really easy to disconnect this rod from this gearbox. It'll turn the right there. You just grab this little pin pull him out and you can slide this guy back and all the way out the back end all right so now that's out of the way so we're free to move about the country I'll just hang that little feller right there okay so that uh, wouldn't be the best way for you to see what's going on in here if I if you come over the top here, there's this little cover that sits over the governor. Governor? And we'll put him over here to the side where we'll step on it. So you've got your mechanical linkages that come in here. A little spring that rides right here. And your butterfly. And I checked this to make sure that this guy was tight, that it hadn't slipped on this shaft. And then this spring 
was originally in the third hole from the top or the handle of the machine. So I moved it up one and what that effectively done was I believe the spring is getting stretched out so it might be time for a new spring. So there wasn't enough force being applied to here while it was running to keep it idled up more and it always wanted to stay at a low idle. So I think this spring is, is stretched a little bit. So by moving it up, it up here on this point, it helps hold that throttle back so where it's uh, revving up higher. And that was all I did. I just moved that spring. So now I'll put it all back together. And hopefully if you're having the issue of your machine not revving up and uh, really throwing the snow, that this will help you guys. And you know, check and make sure everything's tight in here. If you've got a, a loose connection on that governor, obviously that's gonna be messing things up to you, so. It's my two cents. Now we get everything put back together. Um, it should go pretty quick because we're gonna speed this up so you're not uh, bored with the whole process here. If it won't go on, that's what this is for. And then you get a new one. <laughs> Have a kid. All right, so choke's off. Choke is off currently. And I just have to put my little arm back on for the chute. One of those holes up. Get your little pin back here. Line the hole up. Push it on. It really is that easy. Much easier than I thought it was going to be. So, I hope this helps someone out that was in the same shoes as me, that was on YouTube, looking for a way to figure out how to get this thing to ramp up. So, thank you for coming along on this adventure, even though it was indoors. But uh, I hope you guys all have a great one, and we'll see you next time in the woods, on the water. One girl. Take care. Ciao. Now I just thought maybe you guys want to see if this thing actually runs after doing our work. So uh, give her a couple primes here. Turn our on switch to let's go baby. And then the choke is on. Give her a pull.